Hey, Matt. Hi, Mickey. Uh, welcome back. That's good to be um, back. The first thing I guess we have to talk about is uh, what's happened in Iraq, uh, and it's uh, it sort of exploded since uh, the last blogging heads with this bombing of the Golden Dome Mosque, and there's been some sectarian violence. And, and I want to throw out my take, which is uh, it's not as bad as as it looks. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm never convinced that all the, 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 the breathless, oh, everything's going all to hell, uh, news accounts uh, are not overexcited. And uh, in this case, um, I, I, I hew to my position, which is, uh, they're forces of moderation. Sadr doesn't want to permanently break with the Sunnis. His guys are doing most of the Shiite violence. He has a reason to restrain himself. Uh, Sistani is, is exercising his usual uh, cool head, although he's obviously angrier than he's ever been before. And the Sunnis are waking up and realizing, hey, if we have a civil war, we might lose. What do we have to gain? So those are the forces uh, pushing for calm. Right. Well, you know, my, my, my general take on Iraq is that the, the, the bad news tends to be not quite as bad as it's made out to be when, when everyone gets into panic. Um, and then the, the, the good news is also not as good as, as it tends right. to be. I, I mean, there are, you know, I mean, I think there are powerful underlying dynamics at work that, you know, have been at work for a while, uh, which is exactly why everyone was sort of poised to, to, to freak out and say, you know, civil war, the sky is falling, blah, right. blah, blah. Um, y you know, it, it looks already, o over the past few hours, like the sort of spate of violence we saw just there is um, getting under control to some extent. Um, but at the same time, y you know, the, the, the same situation still exists of the sectarian tensions where you know, on any given day, it can spill over. You can have these kind of incidents. Um, you know, I mean, I think, obviously, what, what happened today is going to tend to further harden feelings in various ways. It's derailed the, the political process, the negotiations of the new government. Um, and, 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 you know, that's happened before. Then we try and get it back on track. Um, we, we've done that before. There's no particular reason to think we can't sort of do it one more time. Uh, you know, but I, I think the question remains what, what it's been for, for a long time now, which is, you know, where is this really going? Um, you, you know, these, these factions, they, they, they don't really get along, which is exactly why these problems sort of keep coming up. And, and you know, Zelmi Khalizad has been doing... I think a, a pretty good job of, uh, you know, kind of babysitting and, and trying to get everyone to, to work together. But, you know, if, if he needs to intervene personally w once a week uh, or once a day to say, hey, you know, uh, don't kill each other, uh, it doesn't seem like a, a viable, you know, basis for a, a lasting... Well, he didn't say don't kill each other. He said uh, if you have a, a, a Shiite-dominated government, we may pull the plug and get out, uh, which is some of the Shiite leaders are, are, are blaming... And the Sunni leaders, everybody's blaming him, which seems very unfair. But one, one day the Sunnis will wake up and, and, and realize that these Zarqawi people in their midst that are provoking the Shiites and attacking them aren't their friends, and they will, they'll kill them. Isn't that, isn't uh, that what's going to happen? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, uh, I, I think a contention that I at least half believe is that the, the, the day when that will happen is the day when... Sunnis stop feeling like they need these allies against a foreign occupying army. Um, that, you know, there's already an enormous sort of distaste among, you know, people who are trying to represent the interests of Iraq's Sunni Arabs for people who are, you know, coming as part of a, a much broader global jihad, blah, 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 blah. But on the other hand, when, when you have the U.S. Marines kind of sitting in your town, um, you try and find whichever allies you can take. Right. Well, uh, Wad Cole uses that as the basis for arguing that this is an opportune moment to bring the UN back in and substitute UN peacekeepers for for those Marines, uh, on the grounds that that will allow the Sunnis to sort of stand down without losing face and give them uh, more mm -hmm. confidence. It's not a crazy idea. I mean, I tend to think the UN's record in that part of the world is so awful. Uh, and especially with respect to ex-Bath Party members, 
that, that I'm not sure I want that. But uh, what do you think? Well, you know, I, I think it would be great for the United States, for other countries uh, under a UN flag to, to, to come in. I, I just don't see, you know, any other countries wanting to do that. I mean, you know, most of the world seems happy to kind of have this be America's problem. I think it's possible that if we really threatened to, to stop dealing with the problem, unless the rest of the world came in and helped us out, that that might spook them enough to do it. But, you know, I, I don't think other leaders around the world, um, you know, particularly want to put their citizens on the line for, you know, an endeavor that uh, most of the world has uh, always thought was a giant mistake. Right. I do notice that um, both Iraq the Model and Informed Comment, Juan Cole's blog, which are the sort of two blogs I go to when I want to find out what's happening, have calmed down today after being very uh, depressed and apo almost apocalyptic yesterday uh, with all the violence. So um, I take that as a good sign. Um, uh, and, and you're not taking my bait by arguing that it's all going to hell in a handbasket. So, um, well, I think it's going to hell, you know, in, in dribs and drabs, and kind of has it, been for a bad. I mean, if there's years. a partition, is that the end of the world? It's very bad for the Sunnis, but aside from that, uh, uh, well, you know, I mean, I think it would be um, there would be a lot of suffering for Iraqis. Um, I think. I, I think, you know, the, the history of, of partitions has been that it, it involves a lot of bloodshed, a, a lot of people get killed. Um, on the other hand, the, the, the history of partitions has been that they, you know, sometimes provide the only basis for uh, an enduring peace. I, I mean, you know, I, nobody likes to endorse sort of mass population transfers and, you know, the slaughter right. and so on and so forth. Um, you, you know, but on the other hand, right, I mean, if, if what happened at the end of World War I between Greece and Turkey hadn't happened, then who knows how, how tense and complicated well, the, the relationship between those countries might is, be it's still today. Isn't right? India and Pakistan the most uh, large-scale example of a partition? And Yeah, I mean, y you know, and, and obviously, I, I mean, on many levels, that, that, that was a disaster. I think millions of people died. Um, obviously, there, there aren't uh, enough people in Iraq for it to be, you know, bloodshed on oh, that scale. That scale. Yeah. But, 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 but Iraqis, um, you know, they don't live in geographically discrete areas that can just be partitioned off perfectly cleanly, so that's your problem. My impression is it's pretty clean except for Baghdad. I mean, it's not, com uh, not well, completely clean, obviously, but... Uh, even you know, even in Samar, where this mosque was, there's a size of, it's a certain area with a sizable Shiite population. But Baghdad is the place that's really, uh, you know, completely polyglot. Right, but I, I think Basra is about a third Sunni, and the rest Shiite. Mosul and Kirkuk are split between Sunni Arabs and Kurds. Um, you know, I, I think you know their large cities are kind of like big cities anywhere, right, and right. they have a certain amount of diversity. Right. Um, okay, well. Um, uh, I'll ring the bell and we'll move on to the, the uh, second apocalyptic story of the, of the day, sure. which is the continuation of this ports business. Um, I, I've, I've now read up uh, on both sides and have some fairly strong views, but what, but what do you think first? Well, my, my, my views have softened a little bit. You know, when I, when I first heard this... What way were they uh, hard? I didn't know that. When I first heard about this, I was in kind of full-on outrage. This is a disaster mode. Um, you know, looking back at it, I doubt... It seems unlikely to me that something, you know, really bad is going to happen as a result of this. Um, on the other hand, the Bush administration has had a, a kind of record of just being weirdly cavalier about port security in general, and they don't seem to have gone through the, the process in this deal in a way that indicates that it even occurred to them that there might be any kind of problems. So, I mean, I think it's definitely been a good thing that we've had a little hue and cry, and this will get some more scrutiny.